Howdy, just a quick one, theoretically. Um, we finally got to the Reign of Terror, which is the reason, as I may have alluded to, why uh, we haven't been doing this for ages since I had the idea way back when. Um, and I'm not going to bang on about what goes on in the episode too much, because you can go on the on the internet if you're really that bothered, all two of you, one of you, none of you that read. The, th the key thing from tonight that really struck me, we're in the last story of season one, um, episode, whatever it is, 30-something. Um, how confident this programme has become. Um, all the lead actors, even including Susan, to be fair, I've got a fair understanding of what, what their character's all about. The problem with Susan, of course, is that her character doesn't work, really, but, OK, we'll have to forgive her that. Um, we managed to have a little bit of old-style bickering, um, um, a little bit of... Um, uh, Ian and Barbara smarming around the Doctor but we got to a stage where they can do things like that and it's still within their characters um, we, I, I, I genuinely feel that watching it through this way I've seen Ian and Barbara grow into as companions and they do have a little natter about that that's really nice we get uh, a programme so confident that you can bring in two characters in the first episode that you think are going to be mainstays for the rest of this story and both of them are killed then the story. One of them in particular seemed very charismatic, um, and both me and Libby said, "Oh, I quite liked him. Wish he wasn't dead. Um, I assume they're dead. I can't see how they're going to come back from being shot by some French revolutionaries." Um, I suppose what I'm fundamental. Oh, and the other thing that gets me is, for the first time, I think I've got a sense of the program being confident enough in the audience being aware of the premise of the program that they can do the whole. Where have we landed thing? Now, when you're watching a Doctor Who story, one of the most exciting things is is that moment where the TARDIS punks down and you as a viewer, uh, unless you're a sad like me who's done all the reading up beforehand, you know, doesn't really have a clue of uh, where the TARDIS has landed. And alongside the Doctor's companions, we try and work that out. Uh, and this is the first story I've genuinely felt we've, we've started to play with that notion as well. So, uh, are we in England? Oh, no, we're in France. What year are we in? Are we in France? That was nice. Really, really enjoyed that. So what I'm basically saying is that um, at this, the onset of the last story in season one, I really feel this programme has got some mighty kahongas. You know, it really knows where it's at. Anyway, I'm stopping now. I've just been painting. I've got painted hands. I'm going to go to bed uh, and I'll speak more about this in episode two. Bye.